Thanks, Hina, for the nice introduction. And uh, at the outset, I am thankful to Dr. Bansi, sir, and his visionary team. And uh, at the outset, I'll say that I'll not go and abide the things which have been discussed because difference in opinion is the balancing act. And we need to differ to define more good things in life. So balancing art and science in diabetes care. I am thankful that I have been given a philosophical topic which is closely to my heart and my vision. But it's art, science or medicine. Here is the tree of karma, a poem written by me which has been recently published in Endocrine Journal uh, with the effort of Dr. Kalra. This is very close to my heart. Life is destined to our deeds. We planted by our genes cherish at warm like seeds, play at lap, touched by many, life remains in cycle, still touched by any. Human without humanity is just a machine. Let's play our roles as we are destined. So, so this, this is the tree of karma and uh, virtually this has been replicated in our Bastar art. And this was our GDF a presenting memento when we have done Global Diabetes Forum Conference. And this has been dispatched to most of our international and national speakers. And you can see that that Buster art, you can see that, that the whole poem revolves around this. So health, happiness, harmony and peace, together we all sitting here are caring for the diabetes. So with this message, I'll go in the philosophy of medicine, spirit of medicine and the art of medicine. Medicine is a science of uncertainty and an art of probability. We all agree. We all agree that in spite of so many discussions, when patient come to in, in front of you, us, then the whole scenario gathers in the same aura, whether we are touched with patient and what we are going to do with him or her. The art of medicine consists of amusing the patient while nature cures the disease. Yes, we are not the curer. We are just a care provider. So nature cures the disease. It is astonishing with how little reading a doctor can practice medicine, but it's not astonishing how badly he may do it. So a bad knowledge, a bad concept, and a bad theory just residing in our mindset can lead to a bad prognosis and very many things which can be changed with our concept. We need to rethink, we need to relearn, and we need to omit the bad things and bad memories also. So first, while, while doing research to this topic, I get something very, very lucrative and interesting by Dr. Panda, medicine, science, or art. And debate over the status of medicine as an art of science continues, and the aim of this paper was to discuss the meaning of art and science. And what he concluded, the debate over the status, meaning of art, science in terms of medicine to found out art based on science, art of medicine, or it's a lost in scene, science of medicine is a pure one or merely applied science or the element of science in all it is full of uncertainty. What is accepted as scientific today may be disregarded in medical practitioners tomorrow in the new era of newer evidence. So introduction of medical humanities or humanistic education. I'll say that we have to go for a humanistic education. My uh, upcoming speaker, Dr. Deepak Jumani will also go with this philosophy and he'll also say that, uh, so I am in between a speaker who are talking about the science. I am a bit, uh, between a speaker who will talking about the love and uh, different aspect humanity. I'll have to catch up both of them. So I need to be very pragmatic. Art versus science. What Mahajan says, cautiously the physicians are not to allow scientific medicine to blunt his humanity, ignore ethics and need for empathy. Why? You, we are facing a lot of intense behavior and for completely including uh, emotional distress in the doctors. Many OPDs we are seeing daily against manhandling, abusing, criticizing. Why? <laughs> Friends, it's not diabetes only. Because we are talking about art and science. Because a diabetologist is the only physician who takes the patient for a very long time. 
very very long time it's not just treating fever it's not just treating a one day one day episode it's treating for longs and years for generations also sometimes we have patients where we have seen fathers and the three generation are our patients sometimes so that's why whole gamut of doctor patient relationship is the important key so we all know that diabetes is progressive disease and whether we should push our previous speakers were saying that insulin is the best treatment, no doubt. But whether insulin is going to treat every patient, some of us and some of the diets have been saying that we, in spite of all counseling, patient doesn't abide. Why? Why should we push when type 2 diabetes is more of insulin resistance, whether insulin is going to solve all crises? No, nothing like that. So we need to have a balancing act and there in a GIST, Elderly patients, patient with CVD, patient with renal impairment, there we have classified and we have different kind of guidelines how do we have go. So goal of treatment of type 2 diabetes is to prevent or delay complications, maintain quality of life as well requires control for all kind of cardiovascular risk parameters, careful considerations for patient related factors and preferences. You can't just up to therapy hope nahi sakte kisi ke upar. Aap, you need to go with the pocket, we need to go the practical aspect of the patient. If you are writing, writing anything and it's not deciphered in his prescription at home, then what's the use of your writing? You may be a good physician, you may be a very scientific physician, you may be leading physician of that, kind, uh, that part of world, but you can't be a best physician until unless you think at a toe with the same shoes, with the same brain of that patient. So FDA guidance for industry in 2020 had clearly said that you need to have a therapy which should be a cardio safe and that's why all trials have been in that favor and there the, there is a the judgment point where if you have a therapy you, you need to have a cardio safe therapy. So decision cycle for patients and probably this is the best this is the best slide and you need to you uh, you need to copy this slide in your clinic and this should be our goal of care this is the smart goal of care and goal of care should be prevent complications optimize quality of life and there should be smart specific measurable achievable realistic and time limited means smart specific you need to assess key patient characteristic whether what is the patient lifestyle how to balance that comorbidities whether it's ASCVD evident, CKD evident, heart failure evident, you need to define in the first instance, sir was saying, you need to go for insulin counseling. Yes, you should go what kind of, what chunk of patient will be needing insulin because you're a smart physician, you will know by the presentation that current lifestyle, comorbidities, what they have. You need to start, consider specific factors that impact choice of treatment. You need to have HbA1c goal tell the meaning of HbA1c, what you are going to achieve and without causing any impact on hypoglycemia or increase in weight gain. Share decision making to create a management plan. Talk to family, caregivers. If you are prescribing insulin and there is no one to give insulin, then what is the use? Patient is not at all literate, then what is the use? So these, uh, these are the things that you need to think smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time limited. You need to give them a better approach. And we all know that glycemic control deteriorates over the time irrespective of the treatment. There is nothing like that I, I want to say in this, this August gathering. We all know there is lifetime increase in HbA1c associated with the 20% risk in uh, risk of heart failure, 12% risk in death, 7% risk of CV event for the first. And in UK PDS, they have shown that 1% reduction in HbA1c is blah, 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 blah. Everybody knows. Then life is a balancing act. Whether you take care of your family, your wife, your job, your kids, your, pa your parents or your patients. This is a balancing act. And if you put it together, then life needs whole time balancing and you are the fulcrum being key in your family. You are the fulcrum, you are the balance man, you are the man in between the patient and the psyche. We are different, so we need to think different. This is not at all that every apple or every size fits to all. So we are different, we need to 
think in a different way. And we are very thankful, although we are maintaining 100 years of insulin, friends, nearly a century after discovery, metformin use is expanding beyond diabetes care. And we have given the world insight that metformin and fixed drug combinations can work together. And they are doing very, very well. And our old physicians and our old school of thoughts, whom we think of in our clinics and in our setups in our area, that they are, they are washed out. They are gone with the gone with the th newer technologies. Not not at all. We have given the world that metformin can be used beyond beyond diabetes care, and it uh, you can you can use that. And beyond metabolic syndrome also, see diabetes what it can do. We have metabolic syn syndrome. We have insulin resistant. It can ha hamper CNS, liver, bone. There is hypotestosterone, visceral adipose tissue is increased and HPT axis changes. This is this all going on, this orchestra is going on throughout the body. So we need to think in a bad big panorama and we need to show and we need to even even in the first addressal we should directly ask the patient about his sexual or her sexual health. And I will not a person to justify, Dr. Jumani is here. So, need for an early and intensive approach in type 2 diabetes is quite important and barriers remain same in every of the clinic. There are limitations, reactive stepwise treatment, therapy not matching to the individual, conservative prescribing of anti-diabetic drug and drawbacks of stepwise approach we know even in short periods of hypoglycemia can lead to high, high degree of complications. A proactive approach is required to get patients to achieve their glycemic control. So, up titrating monotherapy to a maximum level, just taking a gear and changing the gear, changing the gear and accelerating the, the same thing, same car, this, this is not going to, you need to ch change the car, you need to go with a flight, you need to go with a boat, and you need to go with a cycle, anytime, means you, you need to change, you need to change the, the mode of treatment, you need to change the transport of treatment and you need to carry out, because my topic is to balance that's why I am uh, showing these, these, these studies. A significant number of patients with type 2 diabetes have poor glycemic control and that's why glycemic controls tend to decline over the monotherapy. These are substantial inertia. When we start one drug with such time, then we adding, then adding. So we need to balance and just adding insulin will not add years. Dear friends, in any of the studies, Insulin has not shown any good CVOT data. Whatever the publications are there, they, they, they can't be the best therapy. Had it been the theories, then in all insulin studies, why the patients in these groups have not shown reverse with the CV events. In Bari 2D, what they have done. In CABG and post-PCI patients, what they have done, they have given insulin and they have given insulin sensitizing therapy. Insulin sensitizers are metformin and pyogletazone. In India, we need more of insulin sensitizer. We need to have our sugar going to the skeletal muscle. We don't need just a secretogogue and an insulin analog every time. So that's why what happened in long-term studies, they have found in PCI and post-CVG patient, the, our sensitizers work be better along with the treatment. So proactive management of glycemia, early combination therapy, potential advantage of early combination therapy, individual with high baseline HbA1c require more intensive treatment, there is no doubt. There is no doubt that every armamentaria drug in our armamentarium, 8 to 9 class of drugs, we need to make the kitchen, the cocktail, the best cocktail to our patient. And there is nothing like that. This drug is best or this that drug is best. No doubt. There are so many good things with every of the drug. We all men, we all sitting here have different characteristics and we are better and best in some of the points and some of the times. That's why our therapy also. So reasons for conservative prescribing treatment, we are we need to have familiar traditional agent. We need to talk to our patient that drug is available or not at that place. We need to perceive and try therapy accordingly. So ideal combination of glucose lowering agent can be complementary mechanism of action, tar targeting all stages of disease, provide durability, well tolerated. And that's why these, these combinations help when we add 
so quadruple therapy which we uh, which we used to say that it's not working it's working recently dr panikar sir and the team have been doing they have designed an app in mumbai and there will be a lot of papers where 7 to 9 which we used to say that evo 9 we need to give insulin nothing like that with 7 to 9 they have tried two three drugs 9 to 11 they have tried two three drugs and evo 11 they have given insulin but there is always a but you need to have a subjective approach you need to divide your patient with ASVD predominates, heart failure or CKD predominates and these slides are all available, all guidelines are available. You need to modify and there should be a good, good paradigm shift regarding the towards use of SGLT2 inhibitor and DPP4 inhibitor. In this forum also, they have shown why these sister drugs help better and how can the quadruple therapy can be used in both metformin the first line treatment, the glycemic control is not achieved, we can just shift the gears with triple therapy and these therapies can help and attract our most of the patients. So SGLT2 and DPP4 inhibitor, they work better because of the synergistic combinations. So are there unique benefits to starting chronic insulin treatment early? I'll come to the point because I am I, I'm saying that point uh, initially also. We need not to push our, every of our patient to insulin because this topic is balancing art. So we need to balance science, we need to balance the patient profile, we need to balance everything in our clinic within the short spine of 10 to 15 minutes what you talk, how the patient comes, how the patient wear clothes. You can have a brief picture of that patient that this patient is not going to afford, this patient is, has to be classified for heart failure or not. The in UK previous studies, insulin treatment arm HbA1c rose progressively in spite of 10 years follow-up of treatment. Then what's what's the thing that they everybody is pushing for insulin? The percentage of insulin treated patient who maintain HbA1c of 7 was 47 at 3 uh, 47 percent at 3 years, 37 percent at 6 years, and 28 percent at 9 years. So we need to think of differently in our scenario, and we have enough enough everything in in our thali. We have a cocktail which can be designed very nicely with SGLT2, with TGDs, with <laughs> other available OHS. So be visionary, be helpful, be a motivation. Dr. Vasant and Dr. Uh, uh, Bansi sir has come to my clinic in last. Uh, this is the photographs which I, these, these photographs give you a vision. These photographs give you a motivation that you are in the bay. In spite of having in some small city, you can have such kind of motivation and can turn a, a balancing act to a re for your patients. Thank you.